Hello everyone, thanks for joining. In this video, I'm gonna show how to use PowerShell to update rows in Azure Table Storage. Now, some of you may, might be wondering why. Um, I started out this project uh, trying to upload or update data into a CSV and then report on it. And I kind of ran into some problems with file access and I got this idea that instead of using CSV, I should be able to write this data into Azure Table Storage. And that's really where this came from. That project ended up not turning out, but I was still able to write this data into Azure. So that's what I'm gonna go over. Um, for those of you who are unfamiliar with Azure Table Storage, it is a NoSQL schemaless database. So I like to think of it as a large CSV or a large Excel spreadsheet. Um, so with that, let's get started. In order to follow along here, you're going to need a couple things. First, you're going to need an Azure subscription, of course. Um, you wouldn't be able to write data to storage Azure Storage without it. You're also going to need a PowerShell editor. Um, I'm using Visual Studio Code with the PowerShell extension, but you're free to use whatever you want to. And you will need Azure Storage Explorer. If you are unfamiliar with Azure Storage Explorer, uh, can be downloaded for free from Microsoft's Azure website. It's a great tool for taking a look at your storage account and see the data in there. We're also going to actually see the data we write into the table storage with this, so that's why it's important. All right, with that, let's get started. Uh, I'm going to walk through getting some of the basic things set up here, uh, starting with the storage account. So. Let's get started with that. I have a resource group on my account called T, uh, let's see, Table Test RG, something real original. And within that, I'm going to add a storage account. Here it is, blob file tables and queues. All right, we're gonna call this table test 321 if it's available. It's thinking. Yep, it's available. So there's some restrictions around storage account names because they are globally addressable. Uh, they have to be a, a format that's compliant with URLs, uh, no caps, and it has to be globally unique. So we're gonna keep the deployment mode model a resource group. Uh, let's change this to a V2, standard performance, replication. We're gonna do LRS just because it's a little cheaper. I'm gonna keep everything else pretty much the way it is except for we have to define a resource account, or I, I'm sorry, a resource group. We'll leave it in central US and we will hit create. That is going to create our storage account. All right, that took a few seconds, but it is done. So let's refresh here. And there it is. Now we have the storage account. Let's go in and create a table for us to use. Now, in this is um, output into the table. So we are going to call this table perf data. Nice and simple. The next step is to connect to this account from Azure Storage Explorer. So to do that, let's go back to our storage account here and go to access keys. Access keys are basically the password for the storage account. So it's not something you'd wanna post on YouTube or anything crazy like that, but the storage account will be long gone by the time you see this, so I'm not too concerned. And this, will give the user, whoever has this information, the rights to read, delete, do a lot of stuff. So you do want to keep those secure. So I'm going to go into Storage Explorer, add an account, and this is table test 321. I'm going to paste that key in, we'll test, and save. You can see there is my perf data table. All right, now that I have that all set, I can go into 
um, go into PowerShell and actually start building out the script. So let's look at what we got. First thing is we're going to set up some variables. Um, storage account name is still table test 321, table name perf data, SAS token. Let's go over here and look at what a SAS token is. So we talked about access keys giving you basically keys to the kingdom, access to everything. There is a shared access signature option on the storage account. Here you can get more granular in what type of access you give out. So you can disable blob, file, and queue access. We're only accessing a table, so that makes sense. You can set the allowed resource types, uh, allowed permission. If you want to give somebody read only or read write and not be able to delete, that's all possible through here. You can set the time, uh, the length of time this is valid for. So I'm just going to set it for the next day. If you want to define a source IP address, you can and the protocol used. So um, let's see here. We generate the SAS key. There it goes. And there it is. So I'm going to copy this and go back into PowerShell and dump that key right there. All right, I also have a, a variable here to get the current date. I have a partition key. So within Azure table storage, you have a primary key that's made up of a partition key, a row key, and a timestamp. Now the timestamp is created on the server side. The partition key is used to support load balancing. You can have multiple partition keys. You can also sort on that if you want to have use that as a just a reference for what, whatever you're looking up in the on the table. And those are all required. So and the third part of that, the row key, I'm going to get into here in a further step. Once we have the partition key, I'm going to also instantiate the process as an array. All right, once that's set up, I need to create the connection context. And that's what these two commands will do. So I'm creating the storage context with this first command. And again, that's calling for the account name and that SAS token. And then I'm defining the table object here uh, using the get Azure storage table, table name, and that storage context. So that's going to give me, uh, let's see, it's going to give my script the rights to log in and update the table and also point to where the table is located. All right, the next step is to actually get the data. Again, this is just sample data uh, using something to write up there. What I'm going to do is um, get the top 10 CPU processes. So let's just see what that returns. All right, so pretty simple command. We've got an array now of all the pro top 10 CPU usage uh, processes. Now we have to write that into the table. And that's where this next step comes in. In order to do that, I'm just set up a for each loop that will go through each process and add it to the storage table. So the command is add storage table row. We're pointing at the table partition key. Now the row key has to be unique. And what I did here is I have a, a good that I converted to string that's going to be unique. And then the properties that I'm adding are the process name, ID, CPU, and memory. And then I've got a null out so it doesn't write anything to the screen after adding it. So let's save that and let's run it. Oops. There it ran. Now let's go over to table, or I'm sorry, storage explorer. If we do a refresh, there it is. So we've got that partition key, the row key that I added in, and then we've got the data, the memory process name, CPU time, and ID. Um, that's it. Uh, we can run this again. Go back, do a refresh. You can see we've added more data. 
Now, if I was going to trend this data or do any type of reporting on it, one thing that it's missing is a date or a timestamp of some kind. So I can add that in here by adding the time. And let's see what happens when I do this. Because remember, this uh, table storage is schemaless, so I should be able to add a new column in without any issue. So I save that and run it again. Now we go over, do another refresh. And now I have a timestamp. And you can see anything that didn't have the timestamp before is just set as null. Run it again. Refresh. And there it is. That's all there is to it. Those are the steps to write data into Azure Table Storage from PowerShell. I hope you found this useful. I'll have this code posted up to my GitHub page and with a, with a link to it below. Again, I hope you found this informative and thank you for watching.